Rapishaholic fam, welcome back to another episode. We are about to embark on a really interesting and cool adventure. We're gonna hop in the Forerunner and start our journey up along the east coast of the United States from Stewart, Florida, where I am now, first to Jacksonville, then to Charleston, then to like Myrtle Beach, uh, North Carolina, possibly New Jersey, and our end goal is going to be my old home, Montauk, New York. And I might also venture up to New England a little bit. And then I'm going to fish my way back down. And all in all, it's going to be like a two to three week fishing mission adventure. And it should be pretty epic. So stay tuned. I'm going to put some miles behind us. And I will see you guys at our first fishing spot. We made it to Jacksonville and it is not too bad so far. It's a little breezy and uh, typically all the times that I fish Jacksonville I've went out in the kayak up in the creeks but today I want to try hitting the ocean front here and the inlet's right over there and I'm thinking you know maybe we could walk out on those rocks and see if we can catch some fish. I stopped at the tackle shop on the way here and picked up a couple dozen mud minnows and I was gonna go out in the kayak along the rocks, but unfortunately I checked the radar and in like a couple hours, uh, we're supposed to get some pretty nasty storms in this area. And originally I wanted to get up here for like first light and fish first light until like midday before the storms hit, but I overslept a little bit. I should have woke up at one, I woke up at three. And by the time we like hit the road, it was like 4.35 and it took like three and a half, four hours to get up here from uh, uh, Palm City, Stewart, Florida. So let's get geared up and you know see if we can make something happen. So stay tuned, hopefully we catch some fish. catch on this bad boy. I imagine there's got to be some flounder, trout, maybe some redfish, you know, inside along the rocks here. I'm sure if we went all the way out to the end of the rocks, like there probably would be a better shot for some bigger fish. But you never know, as the tide comes in, there could be a lot of big fish that could cruise in here uh, up towards the beaches. Oh, I just had a bite. Fish on. Hey, there we go. Nice healthy trout right there. That's a pretty good size one. All right, let's get him back. There he goes. All right, let's get another minnow on and send them out there. Pretty sweet that we've only been fishing for like five minutes and we've already caught our first fish at this new spot here. So it only seems to be like five, six feet out there and I'm not letting my bait just sit there. I'm moving it along every couple seconds or so, you know, so I'm covering bottom covering water and I must have just put that right in front of that trout and he just inhaled it. 
Also, by the way, guys, huge shout out to Navalis for continuing to support this channel and for sponsoring this video and hooking me up with a lot of awesome bamboo apparel. And if uh, you're an outdoorsman or woman and you're looking for some comfortable, uh, really breathable and sun protecting apparel, uh, definitely consider checking them out. And I'll put a link down in the description. And I love it for fishing because of the cuffs like this to protect your hands. And also like on a windy day like today, I could put my hood up. So uh, one, it's gonna keep the wind off the back of my head and my ears. And also it'll protect the top of my head from the sun. Uh, and luckily today it's not that sunny, but let's uh, keep it going now. See if we can uh, maybe get a redfish and a flounder and get like a cool Jacksonville inshore slam or or maybe a sheep's head would, would be a complete slam or would that be a grand slam or actually well there's black drum too so maybe sheep's head and black drum would be a grand slam um you guys comment down below what a Jacksonville slam is so let's get back to it Oh, there's another fish. What do we got here? Oh, a little snapper bluefish. probably run into this one's parents once I get up to the northeast especially when I'm in Montauk make sure you guys have a good pair of pliers with you whenever you're you know fishing just in general actually but especially if you're trying to catch bluefish even these little guys will do some damage to your fingers feels good to get out of the rain and wind that's for sure and unfortunately uh, we fished our way back and nothing else and I also sat in like one spot along the jetty on the way back that I like had to stop and fish at because the rain was coming down so hard and it was so windy that I just did not want to be attempting to walk back uh, in and I sat by this big rock that was like just high enough and perched over enough that with the wind blowing it like push the rain around it and I can sit like really close to it and like my head would, would stay dry but unfortunately there was uh, no fish there really I saw uh, like a little sea turtle and some mullet and that was about it and then once we got off the jetty I found the ambition to go hit a sandbar that's on the inside of the inlet and I had one more bite there but it was small and it was probably like a cocktail bluefish if anything and you know it's really a shame this fishing mission here in Jacksonville today was kind of a bust because of just the timing you know I really wish I got here at first light and that's when I wanted to get here but it just didn't work out you know sometimes that's just uh, the way life is but on our return trip south I'm probably gonna come back here and see if we can make it happen and for now and the rest of the video I think I'm just gonna get out of these wet clothes and then start driving up to Charleston and I will see you guys up there tomorrow and hopefully we'll be able to get out on the kayak and fish uh, around the inlet out there and uh, get you know way out on uh, one of the jetties and maybe get on a better bite and catch some bigger fish so stay tuned i'll see you guys tomorrow Charleston. It is absolutely gorgeous this morning and we're gonna get the kayak fully loaded, get out there and at the end of the outgoing tide we're gonna ride it out into the ocean uh, like two, two and a half miles and just see what happens. So stay tuned. All right. 
right, just about made it out to some of my marks from the last time that I fished along this jetty. And I think we're gonna start drifting with a mud minnow just along the rocks. I got the small circle hook. I'm just gonna thread them on like that. I got 25 pound fluoro and a split shot just attached to our leader that is tied direct to my 20 pound braid with a uni to uni knot. Now we got the trout and the bluefish yesterday. It'd be nice if we could get maybe a redfish and a flounder here today. So let's send it down. It's 15.8 feet right now and there's not a whole lot of current because it's kind of like slack low right now and that's why i'm using such little weight and i'm sure as the morning progresses and into the early afternoon while this incoming current picks up i will have to put on heavier weight oh we got something here oh my what a lunker. Cute little sea bass. I had a feeling we'd catch one or two of those. And I think my bait's still alive. So we'll recycle them. Oh! There's something better. This fish absolutely hammered that recycled mud minnow. There we go. Oh, I think this is a redfish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So sweet. Oh, there he goes again. In uh, my area down uh, in, you know, Stewart Palm City, Florida. Like there's some redfish there, but their populations are kind of down. And I believe there's like a moratorium on, an, on them now, so you can't keep them. But the population up here in the Carolinas is pretty strong. There's the leader. There we go. All right, not a giant, but that's a nice, fat, healthy redfish. Oh, these fish grippers aren't working too well. Let's pop that circle hook out. That hook was really in there. There's another one. <laughs> that was quick. I would have to say that uh, between redfish, snook, and striped bass, redfish might have like the most like bulldogging force, uh, you know, pound for pound compared to striped bass and snook. Like a striped bass of this size would not probably pull this hard. Wait, what? That's not a redfish. Okay, I take back what I said. This is, I think, a freaking sea turtle. 
somehow I snagged a sea turtle. I swear to God. Oh, yeah, it's a sea turtle. Holy crap. This is a first for me. Oh, you poor thing. I'm sorry. Come on, I'm going to try and help you. Okay. I got him. Let's see if I can get the hook out. Sorry, buddy. I'm really sorry. The good thing is, is these guys don't really snap like a snapping turtle. What's up, buddy? Sorry I caught you. There he goes. Well, I hope I did the right thing. I'm sure there's probably laws about not handling sea turtles, but that was kind of needed. And I felt like I was helping that animal out after an accidental catch. And although this is a small hook, like it probably would have you know, rusted out really quickly. I just would hate to leave something like this in a sea turtle because I feel like they already are struggling all around the world. Oh, there's another fish. Another sea bass. I'm gonna probably get a lot of these once I get up to Montauk, but they'll be much bigger. Oh, there's a good fish. There we go. That's another red fish for sure. Or watch it be another sea turtle. Hopefully not. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's another redfish. It's about the same size, or maybe a little smaller than that first one. Unfortunately, the circle hook did not do its job. So I'm just going to cut it back and we'll release them. It's a fish with these moment chugs. I'm just using this, these little 1 0 um, owner circle hooks. And I'm tying with a polymer knot, which is basically just through the eye of the hook, then back the first way you came in. So you make a loop just like that. Simple overhand knot. Pull it down to the eye of the hook. And then you take the loop and you 
swing the hook through or lure and you pull it tight always wet it before cinching it down and that's it all right got another mud minnow on ready to go and uh, it's taking forever for this incoming current to start but the fish don't seem to mind and they're chewing we got the two reds the three black sea bass and the sea turtle on the board so far for the day and we've been out here for about an hour and like 40 well i got out here actually like at not, or, I, like halfway out on the jetty at like 9 a.m by, by the time i got out here to the end it was like 9:20. So, yeah, it took about an hour to get out here to this area where we're catching the fish. And unfortunately, we can only be out here really till 3 p.m. because high tide is 3.55, 4 p.m. basically. So we don't want to be out here past 4 p.m. because then the tide will switch around probably really quick and then start going out. And we do not want to be stuck in outgoing current trying to head back to the ramp and it's going to take about an hour to get back in it took about an hour to get out here and it's still crazy to think that we got a sea turtle and you'd think out of all the day in and day out fishing that i do in florida where there's a lot of sea turtles that i would have snagged one there before here but you know if you're a local charleston native uh comment down below if that, the same thing has happened to you here in this area uh because i don't think it's that common but hopefully we don't get another one of those and maybe we can just get another nice redfish or two in the next like 15 20 minutes on the mud minnows and then i really want to try throwing around some lures and see if we can get on a bite doing that and then just stick with whatever ends up working the best so stay tuned let's uh, keep it going and just enjoy this gorgeous charleston day and the awesome fishing oh there he is nice Good fish on. It's just so easy with these mud minnows. They love these little baits. And what's awesome about them is they're extremely hardy. You know, you can keep them in a bucket for days with just a little aerator. There we go. This one got the hook right. And look at his gill. He's got like a messed up gill plate there. Let's get you back. See ya. All right, let's tie that up. And I've got this five inch Z-Man swim bait on with this half ounce jig head. Let's try working this along the rocks and seeing if maybe one of these reds want to eat it. Now, if I take like 10 15 casts at this and don't even get a single bite we'll probably try maybe one of these nomad vibes and then if that doesn't work either then probably go back to the bait There's a fish. Oh, another sea bass. They love swim baits too.
By the way guys, if you're wondering about the rods that I'm using in this video, they are the brand new Dark Matter Fishaholic Heavy Action Inshore Series spinning rods. And we worked uh, well over a year on this rod, uh, Dark Matter and myself, and I fished with a couple prototypes for a little over a year until finally, just a little less than a month ago, we got the finished product in and th these rods are perfect for this kind of fishing because just in case you know we end up hooking into say a 40 plus inch redfish we'll have the backbone to definitely catch that fish and so far i've gotten two sailfish on this rod hooked a marlin and fought it for an hour and chased it for like six miles i've caught tarpon now 45 50 inches a couple 40 inch snook and some 30 inch snook and uh, nice mahi on this setup and I, I i've had a blast fishing with them and it would really mean the world to me if you guys want to check them out at the link in the description and also if you want to pick one up and fish with it and you know hopefully catch some nice fish on it that would be amazing and i think you won't be disappointed ah dang it I'm surprised I snagged something. All right, I lost that swim bait to the bottom, unfortunately. Ah, let's try tying on this Nomad Swim Vibe 95. On this setup, I was also using a 40 pound floral leader. So let's put the Vibe on this setup that has 25 pound floral on it, which could make like all the difference, especially when using lures. Let's catch them. All right, not a bite on the Vertrex vibe either. So strange. Let's switch back to a mud minnow. And if we get a fish right away on that, then, you know, I think that's just gonna have to be the, the hot ticket for today. Oh, look at that. Nice sea turtle. <clears throat> that was a bigger one. And I'm standing up to look to see maybe if there's a cobia behind them because sometimes they'll be following a big sea turtle. Oh, there he is. Fish on. The sea bass are always biting. All right, well, we fished for like 20 minutes along the rocks leading up to that last sea bass. It was 12:17 uh, when we got that fish, and now it is 12:42. So we tried for a bit longer to see if there was any more hungry reds here, and I just had like some more really small nibbles, like like probably some more sea bass but no other redfish so i'm thinking they moved off or they just stopped eating and since it's getting kind of close to 1 p.m i think we should start working our way back and see if we could just catch some fish on our way instead of having to just beeline it back so there's some big buoys out there in the ship shipping channel and i'm kind of curious to go check them out to see if there's any carolina triple tail on them and we have the mud minnows which i think will be perfect for catching a triple tail if they're out there and then there's also the south jetty which is across the shipping channel and being that today is a tuesday uh you know there's not a whole lot of boat traffic out here today so i think we could go hit the ship the shipping channel buoys see what's out there and then go hit that south jetty for like an hour or so and then start heading back so let's go do it All right, let's see if there's anything around this, this buoy. Nothing on the red one. Maybe they'll like green better. <laughs> there's gotta be something on these buoys. Oh, there actually is. I see a crab on the buoys. 
I can get this crab, this would be great redfish bait. See him right there? Got him! <laughs> there we go! <laughs> That's sweet. Hmm, no life. I like the look of this. It's a much uh, steeper drop along the inside of this south jetty. There he is! Fish on! That didn't take long. Jesus. Oh, there he goes. So cool. And when they're on a spot and they're feeding, it doesn't take long with the live bait. That's for sure. Nice, beautiful redfish. See you later. All right, well, since it seems like they're here, let's try using this crab since we got it. Oh, look how juicy this chunk <laughs> won't last long, that's for sure. Here we go. Just got eight. That didn't take long at all. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So fun. This redfish is holding me in place along the structure. Oh man. Ooh. This might be a little bit bigger one. Or not really. It just has a different personality and a little more uh, power. It's got this one's got attitude. Look how pretty that one is. Barely hanging on there.
beautiful. I could, I could feel them drumming. And just barely hear them. Shaholics. Well, I think that's going to be it for this video. I fished a little bit longer on that south jetty and ended up getting just one more little sea bass. And then I actually hopped across the channel and hit two more of these buoys looking for triple tail. And I, I swear that on the green one on the other side, I, there possibly was a small triple tail, but I didn't get them to eat. And now it's almost 3 p.m. So we got to start heading straight back to the launch. Otherwise, if we're out here too long, we'll get caught in the outgoing current once the tide switches around. So we're gonna call it. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a fun day out here, caught a lot of fish. It was much better than yesterday down in Jacksonville. But I feel like if we got out in Jacksonville at first light, we probably could have did something similar to this and probably um, would have caught a lot more fish. And after Charleston today, we're gonna head up tonight to Myrtle's Inlet, Myrtle Beach. And I actually own a condo up there with my sister Erica and my mom, and we bought it all together. So uh, one, one day when my mom retires, then she'll have a place to uh, call home when she's done working at the hospital up in uh, New Jersey. And then after fishing up there tomorrow, then I'm gonna go hit North Carolina and then New Jersey, and then I'm gonna be up in Montauk from like the 15th till like the 22nd, 23rd of July, and then I'm gonna shoot up to New England, and then uh, I'm gonna start working my way south again. And I really wanna get back down to Florida around like July 30th, so then I'll have like a week or so before I actually fly out then to Los Buzos, uh, Panama for a week, and I'm gonna be uh, exploring around that area in the kayak, primarily and uh, Los Busos is kind of hooking it up and if you guys want to join me for that week that I'm there between the 5th and the 13th uh, definitely check the link in the description and then you know, maybe can book and be down there while I'm there and hopefully catch some awesome fish just like I'm hoping to catch and uh, thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed this video please smash the like button hit the subscribe button and like always live to fish fish to live <laughs>